Russia's aggression is imploding in the most karmic way imaginable. The war beast that the Kremlin have been raising over the past nine years is turning against its masters. The war is coming back home to Russia. Good afternoon, this is Henry Keane on your TV State Channel, breaking the hard truth into easy terms for the whole free world directly from Ukraine. Just as once a favorite, Lucifer, was kicked off the skies, Prigozhin was deported to Belarus. One of the Putin's most beloved protégés went against the Tsar, but Prigozhin's abruptly aborted mutiny resulted in him relying on Putin's mercy. The Tsar has granted it, however, in the most casuistic of ways. The mercy was granted to Prigozhin personally, and not to his vassals, which led to the outrage in PMC Wagner ranks. Zhenya, you betrayed us and your guys. You spoke beautifully, we supported you. But now what? We already get the promises of a good life, just like your boys. Trust me, good people won't just leave it to you. The Tsar comes out then, looking frightened and confused. He draws a very unexpected, to say the least, parallels, nervously ensuring the audience he still can't be trusted. I thank those soldiers and commanders of the Wagner Group who made the only right decision. They did not turn to fratricidal bloodshed. They stopped at the last line. Today you have the opportunity to continue serving Russia by entering into a contract with the Ministry of Defense or other law enforcement agencies, or to return to your family and friends. Whoever wants to can go to Belarus. The promise I made will be fulfilled. Then comes the international reaction. We look at Vladimir Putin and think, that man has been rocked and exposed. He didn't think an erstwhile ally was going to take arms against him and declare a march on Moscow. He couldn't have imagined Evgeny Prigozhin advance would be smooth, that town to town he'd meet no resistance, that the locals would stand around and watch that Mr. Prigozhin's forces would shoot down half dozen helicopters wrote Peggy Noon for Wall Street Journal. Whatever it was wrong with this out-of-the-blue mutiny we witnessed recently, it has done its good too. Prigozhin's raid, no matter how suddenly aborted, has broken the integrity of the autocratic Putin's regime that will never regain the strength it had before. The Kremlin's power structure cracked and is beyond repair. And since the Kremlin is done... So is the Wagner Group just as well. Cracks will continue to widen all throughout the rigid, one-man-oriented power vertical of the Kremlin. And as any dictatorship, Putin's regime will inevitably fall. The only question is, who's of the Kremlin's elite gang is going to be buried under the rubble? The weaker Putin becomes, the closer he gets to his inevitable failure, the more likely it is that he will choose to go back down. Therefore... It is critical to double down on supporting Ukraine. This is a unique moment to force Putin to end Russia's aggression. Attackants will be nice just to resolve the issue once and for all. What is the situation on ZNPP? The situation at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is unstable, unlike the way it should be. Stable. I mean, I cannot imagine myself anything else in the world that requires more stability than a nuclear power reactor. Russian occupation of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plants poses an immediate threat of a nuclear incident at Europe's largest nuclear power facility, where Russians are planting mines. And Director General Grossi calls it safety measures. Well, maybe it is the case of a normal safety measures taken for Russia, where human life has a negative value, but not in Ukraine and Europe, where we tend not to burn fires under a barrel of nuclear powder while sitting on it. Russian occupation forces continue to launch missile attacks near a nuclear facility. Despite diplomatic efforts being made by Ukraine and its partners and demands continued in the relevant resolutions of the International Atomic Energy Agency Board of Governors, Russia has refused to withdraw its forces from the NPP and hand over control to Ukrainian state operating in Agartum. Is Russia considering a terrorist attack? Please, the whole question is wrong. I mean, whatever the answer you're about to treat yourself with, please mind you're actually asking this. Is a terrorist state considering a terrorist attack? 
This way or the other, the scale of challenges and threats is extremely high and requires joint and robust international efforts to avert a possible nuclear disaster. Radiation does not recognize borders and will harm all of us. It is a worldwide issue, whether you like it or not. The international community must act now, and the result of this activity should be one, full deoccupation of the Zaporozhye NPP. Nuclear security is one of the ten components of President Volodymyr Zelensky's peace formula. We urge all states and international organizations to join forces in putting this and other peace formula items into action until it is not too late. Ukrainian offensive operations continue on multiple fronts simultaneously, although they are all united by a single objective, complete restoration of Ukrainian territorial integrity within its internationally recognized borders. Ukraine does not fight in the same way as Russia does. Our strategy is to do everything possible to save our troops' life. The enemy's losses are at least eight times greater than ours. We are moving gradually forward in the east and south, forcing the enemy to retreat. Our troops have already advanced in five directions. We haven't lost positions, we have liberated ones. In general, it is all about the constant pressure our army puts on Russians, which allows us to pave the way for the Ukrainian flag to be raised again in liberated areas. The naked truth is, the world shouldn't be afraid to challenge Russia. And Ukraine must receive all the military support it needs so as to achieve one and only goal for the sake of both Ukraine and the entire civilized world, to put an end to Russia's criminal war of aggression. Invasion of Ukraine, mass graves in Bucha, massacre in Irpin, Ekaside in Kachovska HPP mines planted in Zaporizhia NPP right now show us clearly Russian way is nothing but a terrorism and a threat to the entire free world. No country can consider its borders protected and people's safety guaranteed if Russia continues its terror. And it will continue, no doubt about that. Until the NATO summit in Vilnius in July, Ukraine is actively consulting with partners and allies to ensure that the summit adopts decisions that will pave the real way for Ukraine's membership in NATO. Those decisions in Vilnius are crucial for our joint security and Europe and beyond. The summit in Vilnius provides an excellent chance for allies to implement what have been said numerous times and act. Simply because, obviously, NATO needs Ukraine, just as Ukraine needs NATO. NATO Secretary General took part in the European Council on Thursday 29th, June 2023, at the invitation of European Council President Charles Michel. The Secretary General praised the partnership between NATO and the European Union, which has reached unprecedented levels. He described it as a key for continued support to Ukraine and in responding to other critical challenges. The Secretary General welcomed NATO-EU cooperation on the resilience critical infrastructure and today's release of the NATO-EU Task Force Assessment report. He thanked the European Commission and the European External Action Service for the joint work with NATO on the report, which suggests concrete ways to further development of ties, including through deeper informational exchange, work to identify alternative transport routes for civilian and military mobility and closer ties in security research. The Secretary General also underscored the shared focus of NATO and the EU on the situation in Kosovo. He stressed that the NATO-led KFOR mission continues to implement its UN mandate impartially. He called on Belgrade in Pristina to avoid escalation and return to the EU-facilitated dialogue. Time for more on UATV. You ask and we answer. The question by Mara Barna 6096. Can Ukraine army surround the Parisian nuclear power plant to prevent Russia army from enter and exit it till they surrender when gradually squeeze around it till they collapse? Let me put in my own words the words of General Valery Zaluzhny in his interview with Washington Post. The war in Ukraine is not a sports show, so as for the whole world to watch and bet on. Every day, every single matter of our land taken back costs us blood. And the territory of Z and PP will be just as well, will cost blood. Obviously, for some reason, our military command simply cannot just send forces and surround the territory, especially nuclear power plant territory. It will cost too much blood, time and effort. And the way Zaluzhny decides to invest his blood, time and effort seems to be very proper. Without besieging the plant itself, Russian occupiers 
are leaving the ZNPP right now because our soldiers are advancing from other directions. See, we are advancing on spite of every hardship, including insufficiency of ammo, for example, or delay of the, those F-16 fighter jets. So we all should understand and share Valery's illusion is frustration. And while his biggest Western backers would never launch an offensive without air superiority, Ukraine still has not received modern fighter jets, but is expected to rapidly take territory from the occupying Russians. American-made F-16s, promised only recently, are not likely to arrive until the fall in the best-case scenario. The mathematics of war is dead simple, you see. Our troops should be firing at least as many shells as the enemy, but we have been outshot tenfold at times because of limited resources and still our troops are advancing. So it pisses us, me and General Zaluzhny, off when we hear that Ukraine's long-awaited counteroffensive in the countries east and south has started slower than expected. So our army has things to do, you see, like to ensure our survival. We cannot spread our forces to surround and siege Zaporizhia, for example. In military sense, it pays to the enemy benefit, since we would have to take a significant force off the front line and put it directly onto ZNPP. But I think we all, me, you and General Zaluzhny, know what can be done? People in Europe and the West could have raised their voices in order to put some pressure on politicians. Maybe then Rafael Grossi could say that he has recently changed his heart and does not consider Russian mines on ZNPP a safety measure anymore, or we can get them F-16s faster, and then we would not have to siege the ZNPP, but we will grip the enemy at his throat and choke until he collapses. That would probably use a Aspen Stick to make sure those Kremlin Z zombies are not to rise and walk Earth again. It was me, Henry Keen, on UATV Ukrainian State Channel, hoping to explain that how truth in easy enough terms for you today. Like, comment, and subscribe. Ask us a question in the comment below, and we will do our best to answer it online. Thank you. Stay safe. Tune for more.